Hey guys, it's Kim here and welcome to my top five of 2014 feature. Today I am talking to Duncan. Hello, Kim. Hello, Duncan. How are you, my my flux buddy? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I've got a nice cup of coffee here Yeah. in a nationwide mug. Nationwide? I've got a yeah. Marvel mug. Why on earth do we have a nationwide mug in the I, office? We have some very strange mugs mm. in the kitchen. Um, yeah, really odd. We have a zero punctuation mug. Don't, don't not, really know uh, why we have that's that. That's more topical than Nationwide, which yeah. is like an insurance company, isn't it, I think? Well, also, there's mugs <laughs> that we stole from the other people in the office um, that oh. say, like, really boring things, like, I'm the boss and the I office tart the boss. and all that, so... That's yeah. your one, isn't it? No, 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 that's Shin's one. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course it is. Right, without further ado, we are here to talk about your top five games of 2014. What is your number five game of this year? Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Ooh, tell me more. It's a, a mature Lord of the Rings game, which should instantly make you interested because... Because you get to see Aragorn the- naked. <laughs> if only. No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's just a very violent Lord of the Rings game, which is interesting because, you know, most of them have been teen. Especially the Lego one. Oh, my God. Like, oh, absolutely that's for, nothing that's happens in that. <laughs> <laughs> Although, like, there is a lot more decapitations in that than there is in any other game. Mm, yeah, true. But there's no blood, so that makes it PG. Mm. So what what do you do in Shadows of Mordor? So it's like, a, I, I, I haven't really played any of these like, Assassin's Creed games that you guys seem to love but it's like that i think you think but it's also so it's like that you go around you assassinate things it's kind of stealthy and third person action adventure who are you playing as you're this like um ranger like aragorn basically but but he's dead what <laughs> so you're I'm kind out. of like this I'm undead out. guy and he's he's like he can't go to onto the afterlife or something for some reason uh-huh. so you team up with this like um elven king wraith who also can't move on Mm -hmm. so he gives you like these magic powers and stuff so you've got these kind of range of powers and also got like wraith powers Mm -hmm. and eventually you can also like recruit orcs and there's a there's an interesting system where um the orcs will become like there's like a kind of dynamic hierarchy of the orc like high command Mm -hmm. and based on what you do like some orcs get promoted and some get killed and stuff like that it's quite it's quite interesting so you end up with like your own kind of characters that evolve over time. And um, so why why is it your number five? What is it about that that has ensnared you? It, it, it's it's the captain system really that makes it interesting. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only thing that's really done that's new, but it's it's just really cool. Like you've you get killed by some like random scrub arch orc, <laughs> and then he'll get like promoted to to a captain, and then oh, right. he'll come back later with like some henchmen and like he'll talk about how he beat you last time yeah and stuff like that and also if you kill them and they don't like you don't cut their head off sometimes they can come back and they've got like a big scar and what? they're like i'll get you this time it's really cool <laughs> that sounds <laughs> awesome well excellent okay so that is your number five your yep. fifth fifth game of the year what is your fourth game of the year Number four is Mario Kart 8. Ooh, interesting. We we both love Mario Kart, don't we? Uh, absolutely, yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think this one is this one has done a very a good thing and as adding new content, which mm-hmm. no, no other Mario Kart has done before. Yeah. And like the Zelda map and the Zelda car and stuff, that was all really awesome. Yeah, you loved that, um, didn't you? Yeah. Oh my god, remember it's when we played awesome, it and you it? were trying to you were trying to get the Master Sword and you just totally screwed oh. up. <laughs> I think for me, I love that Mario Kart still has the kind of infuriating. Like, people think Nintendo are casual and it's for casual gamers or for kids or whatever. But it has that thing of like being casual enough that you can literally just pick it up and play it, like having never played games before. Yeah. But it is nails as well. So the challenge is there for people like you and oh, me God, who yeah. are a bit more kind of like into games and have played Mario Kart all it's, our lives. If you want to get like a perfect lap, it's super hard. Super mm. hard. And there's so many like random elements which can just screw your day over like yeah blue uh, shells just, just go nuts <laughs> well they're, they're not quite so random there's other things just yeah just get drive me nuts <laughs> do, do you remember when um, Martin so like fun. green shelled you um, oh. just by the finish line was it yeah and you oh, just got totally and then you, screwed over yeah you end up going off into the mud and mm. oh dear yeah. god yeah I, I think that's the thing as well it's like you think <laughs> you think you're doing really well and then at the last minute the AI will go nah mm-hmm. yeah. nah it's, it's just like there's no other racing game where I, that I can think of that it can just change so quickly like mm. who's mm. first and stuff like yeah. it's really cool I think it's a great friendship tester <laughs> so everyone thinks of it as a, like a party game and stuff like that so everyone will come around like yeah party well at least at my parties anyway um, and we'll sit down and play it and then like you know we'll be like yeah we're having a great time and then five minutes later it's like I hate you I never yeah. want to speak to you again get out of my house 
<laughs> yeah, but also it's 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 quite good because someone that isn't quite as good can also like do do things in it that that mm. will like annoy the first person. Like mm. you know, you, if you're near the back, you do get cooler items and you get blue shells and rockets and all sorts of things. Yeah. So if you're not so good, you actually end up having more fun sometimes. Yeah, uh, which is really cool. Yeah, I, do, I must admit, I do get really bored of getting just coins and yeah, exactly. bananas and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I'm absolutely in love with the um, Zelda DLC. Like playing as Link is just hilarious, especially because his knees poke up over the cart. Like yeah. I have endless <laughs> amounts of giggles just looking at him, just <laughs> squeezing into a little cart, like going, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favourite tracks, like straight away as well. Yeah, it's really absolutely. Good one. absolutely. Yeah, um, I saw a cartoon strip recently done after the DLC launched of like Zelda talking to Link, and she's going, "So you've done all the side quests, you found <laughs> all the rupees, you've done all of this. So surely you're able to do the main quest now." And then Link kind of looks a bit guilty. In the next panel, you just see him in a cart, like having a whale of a time, like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it. I know. I, I love. I love that Nintendo is getting a bit more kind of um, tongue in cheek about their IPs and not being like Link yeah, is their kind of need serious to at this dude. Point, though. Yeah, I suppose. But um, been around for so long. Yeah, there's going to be more DLC in the new year. There's going to be um, the Animal Crossing yeah. one as well. Um, I'm not with the villager and all that. Quite as much because I, I I got Animal Crossing and I didn't enjoy it at all. Oh, I loved it, but mainly because it just sucked game, my life out. The first thing you out. do in that game is get a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's because um, Tom Nook's evil. Like he's it's just evil. It's not really a game. I don't think. I don't think there's a game in there. It's I a think life it's just... simulator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in your life, you, you you settle down in a village with a bunch of raccoon friends. Well, if I'm playing a game where my life is less interesting than my real life, something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I just got addicted to it like the kind of like drop in and out nature like you know if I was on the bus for like five minutes I'd just check in pick up some apples yeah. sell them you know write yeah. letters actually that was the thing where I started writing letters to, 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 to my neighbours and I just got into this never ending cycle of like they, I've written them a letter now they've written me a letter <laughs> and now I've got to write them a thank you letter and now they've sent me a gift and I've just got to keep saying it just stressed See, me out doing that in real life let yeah. in a game but that's the thing it just stressed me out and I was like do you know what I'm deleting letters I'm having a no letter policy yeah. people can send me letters I'm not writing back to them I'm not getting sucked into this <laughs> I'm bad enough at replying to my work emails let alone yeah, exactly. writing letters to the goddamn alpaca that lives next door <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. Wow. So that was number four. Mario Kart in at number four. So what is number three? Dark Souls 2. Oh, I didn't even know mm. you played that this year. I didn't play the first one. Like, when it first came out, I kind of, I did, I kind of ignored it. And then people started liking it towards the beginning of Dark Souls 2 when it came out. So I was like, maybe I should play Dark Souls 1. And I was like, no, I'll wait for Dark Souls 2. And I did. Mm -hmm. And the first three or four hours, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely hated it, and then yeah. it just got to a point where it just kind of clicked, mm. and then I was like, "Oh, that's how you do it! Oh, that's how you kill this!" And then I just kind of started roll. It just started like snowballing, and I got yeah. better and better at it. And it, it just—it's so satisfying when you beat like a big boss, yeah, because it's so hard. <laughs> but yeah, once it kind of clicks, it really becomes a lot of fun. It just sucks you in. I love the amount of mythos and lore and folklore yeah. and culture that they've put into it. I love um, the developers. I interviewed um, them a couple of years ago. Um, and they were so excited about kind of Western culture and Western myths and legends and Western architecture as well. He was talking about how he went to Germany and did a tour around Europe to look at old castles oh, and yeah, you can definitely gothic see that structures and there. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I love that kind of thing because I love any kind of folklore and mythology and, and you know, ancient gothic art architecture. I don't think you can go wrong with that. No. Um, and I, I do love the boss monsters in it, like the kind of designs and creatures. And I also love that you can totally dick people over in it, you know, with a message that you can lean oh, around. Oh, the message like... system is hilarious. Oh my God, it's so much fun. It's like you get one that says, try jumping. You're like, no, I'm not going to try jumping. Yeah. And then it's like, not even a troll. You meant to jump there. But... Yeah. <laughs> but you've been, you fell for it so many times before that, that yeah. you just are so jaded. It's, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't trust any of them. I just see the glowing message and I'm like, yeah, I don't believe you. Don't believe you. <laughs> don't believe you. And it, and it often works out that they are telling the truth, but I'm just like, I don't trust anything anyone's telling me here because, yeah. oh, look, I'm dead. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's good. It's good fun. The, the story, the story is not really there that much. It's a bit lacking in story, like plot. But it's just like I don't know what it is. It's just something about it which wants you just keep playing. That is in at number three. Yep. What is number two? Number two is South Park and the Stick of Truth. Oh yeah. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Explain to me why though. Well, I'm a massive fan of South Park, and this is just like playing in 
an episode you know it just the graphics they've done it so well that it just looks like an episode yeah that was definitely the thing that I loved about it as well as soon as I switched it on because I was a bit like hmm I don't know because it's been stuck in kind of development hell for ages yeah. and then THQ went bankrupt and it got bought out by what was it 2k yeah um, I wondered you know just how good it was going to be but as soon as like I did the first level I was like oh yeah. my god like like you said it is exactly like being inside an episode and I think the amount of references no matter how big yeah, or small like for a South Park fan a like, it was astonishing like <laughs> you know the stuff that you get in the inventory the uh, costume that you could get quotes that some people had it was just like yeah it was fantastic I absolutely loved it I think the involvement of um, Matt Stone and Trey Parker was really apparent because mm. to me it felt like there was a lot of love in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just it's just great. For, like, if for a South Park fan, it's like the perfect game, pretty much. They, c- they couldn't have done a better job, I don't think. Mm. What do you think about the censorship, though? Um, so in EU, there were certain scenes censu- uh, censored, not on namely PC, the not on P- weird, weirdly not on PC. Yeah, so I was playing it on console. Yeah. So I had the um, anal probings and the abortion mini game censored. Um, although it was done in a typically South Park way, where they brought up like a placard and was like oh hey EU yeah. you guys have been censored because of this so we're going to describe the scene and it was just like a really hysterical description <laughs> I, um, I don't think they should have censored them I don't think they were no? that bad honestly um, yeah I mean it's it's, it's, it's it's based on an episode the abortion, mm. the abortion scene at least was based on an episode mm. where essentially the same thing happened yeah um, and it's not actually an abortion it's it's just it's doing it on Randy for one thing yeah. And it's up his ass. Yeah. So none of this like really makes any sense. Um I don't know. I don't I don't think they should have censored. I I put it out on my channel and Yeah. What was the reaction? No one cared. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem with today's youth. <laughs> They're so desensitized. Um, I think that's the thing about South Park though, is the magic of South Park is that it walks a very fine line yeah. between being offensive and parodying well, I think it is very the offensive. offensive but I think that's yeah. that's the kind of point in it. Yeah, it's, it's like taking a taking a piss out of being offensive. Yeah, I mean, I love South Park, and um, I must admit, I've gotten I've lost touch with the kind of recent epi- uh, recent series. But I mean, I've always watched South Park, and I've always loved it. But even then, there have sometimes been episodes where I just can't watch it, or something's yeah. kind of hit me like the wrong way, or something like that, you know. And I think I I don't mind the anal probing so much. <laughs> I don't take that out of context. Um, but the abortion, like the whole <laughs> idea of it, made me feel a bit like. Oh my god! And you know when you fought the giant baby fetus, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt really ill doing that, and I think that almost the giant had Nazi me at the limit. Yeah, I, I I think that almost had me at my limits of like I'm not entirely oh, sure god, it was if I can go disgusting. on with this. It was yeah. it was disgusting in every way, but I think they, you know that's what they were going for. Yeah, but um, I mean I'm glad I stuck with it because um, because then we got to Canada, and Canada oh, to me gosh, was amazing. Yeah, was like when they presented it in the retro JRPG <laughs> style. Yeah. And like with the pixel art and all that, I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was brilliant. I thought that demonstrated both South Park's kind of, you know, taking the piss out of Canada and also like their love for um, old video games. Like there was just so much kind of, I don't know, fandom there. It does show, yeah, it shows a lot of understanding. Mm. I'm just thinking of all the really ridiculous moments where I was just sat there kind of like with my mouth open going, what? Every time you think it can't get any worse... It does. Like, like that, yeah. that, that bit where you shrink down really tiny and then you have to navigate through your parents' bedroom while they're having sex. Oh, God. <laughs> and you just see them in the background and then you get closer and closer and closer <laughs> until you're actually on the bed. And then your dad's balls just drop out. <laughs> yeah, that one was... Oh, it was pretty oh, awkward. God, yeah, just like the, the 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 kind of I can't believe I'm getting closer. No, I'm yeah. getting closer. No, it's getting more graphic. Oh my god, it just gets worse and worse, and you're like, oh god. <laughs> I I can play this. It. Fantastic. Okay, so from South oh, Park to number one. So, da, 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 da. Oh. what is your number one game of 2014, and is it World of Warcraft? No, it's not. It couldn't. <gasps> it couldn't be a more different game to the South Park game. Actually, it mm-hmm. is uh, the Banner Saga, number one. Oh, I didn't even know you were playing that. Yeah, I loved oh, it. Oh my god. I totally loved it. For the uninitiated, what is the Banner Saga? So. It's what it's very hard to describe. It's <laughs> good start. <laughs> I think uh, if you think about it, it's kind of um, tactics combat with a kind of Oregon Trail style bit between combat. Mm-hmm. I guess that's the best way to describe it. But it's <laughs> it's it's just 
it's just so beautiful the game itself it's just the art style is phenomenal it's yeah oh my god like, and the, the music just is perfect it's just so immersive it sucks you into this world mm -hmm. where you play this kind of insignificant part almost like it, it's in this like really bleak world and mm -hmm. you feel like you have no power over anything and it just gives you this amazing kind of like feeling of desperation almost it's mm. great so it's set during what, what is it the crusades i want to say the crusades no, but that's no, not it's, right it's is a, it it's a fantasy fantasy world viking saga yeah yeah so it's like um it's not a real world there's magic and stuff and you're yeah. like these vikings kind of running away from your home now which have been destroyed by these these like monsters mm -hmm. which have come down from the north it's cool it's it's amazing world. Yeah, and it's completely different experience for everyone who plays it, isn't it? Because you know you can make the right decisions or the wrong decisions, and then key characters yeah. may die and stuff like that. And, and yeah, it's it's brutal. Like it really is. They, you can you can have this you know you can have this character you've been using the whole game, and then suddenly just through a, a text option, mm. he'll die in like text, <laughs> and you're like. <laughs> What? Mm. <laughs> no, I, I leveled him up. <laughs> so in some ways, it's to me, it struck me as like a kind of Viking Mass Effect in some ways, sort of, although probably a lot more personal. Yeah, it's you don't play these kind of heroes which are saving the world. You just play this, these people who are just trying to sort of survive almost. Mm. I just like I was playing it and I couldn't stop. And I like every time I wasn't playing, it, I was like, I want to be playing it now. And I. You know, so I like took two days out and I just played the whole thing. What for you was the most memorable moment? Well, I don't know. There's lots of little bits. Like the ending, obviously, is very, very powerful. But there's this one bit which you stop at this kind of standing stone, mm -hmm. and you find this like this baby, which is of like, of these guys, like the evil guys that are that meant to be chasing you away from your homeland. Mm -hmm. And um, you kind of work out like that. You know, these these people that are chasing you. Like they've brought their their families with them and stuff, and they're mm -hmm. obviously like running away from something themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's like a really kind of powerful moment when you realise that they're not actually like these like these horrible monsters that are destroying everything in their path. They're actually running from something too. And yeah. You never find out what it is, mm. <laughs> so you don't know. Like there's this there's this thing which you just like this unnamed thing which is like terrifying these people, which are terrifying you. Yeah, and that's just really powerful. I thought. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the part two where you might actually find out what that is. Mm. Yeah. Well, you have working, surprised right? me. You have surprised me, Duncan Jones. I thought you were going to go for World of Warcraft. I nearly but, did, but yeah. you know, I, I've been playing that for 10 years now. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that's that's old. It's Whatever. Just, it's, it's just like, it's not even a game anymore. It's like yeah. a way of life. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in the office, where every time I turn around, everyone's playing it. <laughs> no. I'm like, do you guys not have videos to edit? Like, come on. Okay, so, Duncan, your top five games of 2014. That's quite a good list. Thank quite, you. It's quite eclectic as well. Mm. You've got good taste. You've got good taste. I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining me today, Duncan. And no we'll see you guys next time. Bye.